Hey, Nerdy Knitter, when you're first learning how to knit, it can feel overwhelming, all of those new things that you're trying to learn. But when you have those first few projects under your belt and you're starting to feel a little bit more confident about those basic skills, it's time to start introducing some tips and techniques that will help you improve your knitting skills as you finish new projects in the future. That's what we're going to look at today. But before we do, I just want to say, hey, I'm Tanya here at Nerdy Knitting. I'm a certified knitting instructor and a knitwear designer. My goal is to help you become a more confident, adventurous knitter. About a month ago, I asked the community here on the Nerdy Knitting YouTube channel what they knew now that they wish they had known when they first started knitting that would have made things better or improved their knitting. And they shared some fabulous answers. So I've taken their beautiful comments and responses and condensed them into nine tips that will help you improve your knitting as you progress along this knitting journey. Now, the first bit of advice, and I think probably the most helpful is swatching. I know lots of knitters hate to swatch. They think it's a waste of time and they wanna jump right into their project. And honestly, sometimes I don't swatch either. If it's a scarf or a shawl, it doesn't really have to fit my body a particular way, so it's okay. But if you want something to fit properly, you need to swatch. But that swatch can also provide you with other information. It can tell you what the fabric is going to feel like. It can show you what those stitch patterns will look like in the yarn you're using. Perhaps you swatch with a really fuzzy yarn and an intricate stitch pattern and you realize those two things are not going to play well together because you can't see your stitch pattern. If you had skipped the swatch and dived right into your project, you would discover this after doing a lot more knitting than you would for a small swatch. You can also decide on the needles you'd like to use. Perhaps you usually use slick metal needles like me, but you find that the yarn is really slippery and you might need wood needles instead. It's better to find that out on a small swatch than on your big project. And don't forget to wash and block your swatch just like your finished project. I know blocking is another one of those things that freaks people out, but all it means is that you're going to somehow get your project wet and let it dry. That's all it is. So however you're going to treat that final project, if it's a simple sweater and you're planning to hand wash it and then lay it on a mat to dry, do the same thing to the swatch. Now, if you're concerned that you're wasting yarn by swatching, you really aren't. In most cases, you can reuse that yarn. You can rip out that swatch if you're running out of yarn for your project. If you're playing a bit of yarn chicken, you can use your swatch yarn to finish off your project. And even if you don't and you save it, it's also a great thing to save because your future project might need a repair at some point and you've got the yarn saved from your swatch that you can use to repair that project. So don't think of swatching as a chore. Think of it as giving you a chance to work with that stitch pattern, decide the yarn and the needles you're going to use, and of course, make sure that your gauge is on point for your project. The next piece of advice is about your knitting needles. Try lots of different types. Try different materials to discover which type of material you like. Do you like metal needles? Do you like plastic? Do you like wood? And also try different types of needles. Try straight needles, try double pointed needles or circulars, or even all of those different methods for knitting small things in the round, like shorty needles or magic loop or two circulars. There's lots of different techniques and methods you can try. Before you invest in a really expensive set of interchangeable knitting needles, try those different techniques and those different material types to see which ones you prefer. The next thing is to try different knitting styles. Perhaps you learned by holding the yarn in your right hand. Maybe you wanna learn with your left as well. It's a good idea to be able to use different hands while you knit because you could end up with an injury in one hand so you could use the other hand to work or you might wanna work on stranded knitting and it's much easier to hold the yarn in two different hands for that. And if you're still fairly new to knitting and you tend to drop the yarn bef between forming each stitch, you have to drop it and pick it up again, that takes a lot of time. So one of the things you could practice is keeping the yarn in your hand as you're knitting so you're not constantly picking it up and dropping it because it just takes so much time. And there's even more to explore beyond just deciding which hand is going to hold the yarn. You could wrap the yarn around your neck like the Portuguese do, or you could try the Norwegian method of purling. There's really so much to explore. Another piece of advice is to learn how to read a knitting chart. Now, I'm not saying you have to use charts all the time, but it really is a skill that you should have 
Some more complicated patterns might not even have any written instructions. So if you want to knit that thing, then you really have to understand the basics of knitting from a chart. So start with a simple chart just to get used to it. So you can use that if you have to. You don't have to use it for every project, but it's a good skill to have. It might seem confusing at first, but the more you practice it, the easier it does get. Now, the next piece of advice is to take classes. You can find classes at your local yarn shop, at festivals, even at Michael's sometimes. You can find them online at Craftsy, Vogue Knitting, Skillshare. There's lots of places to find online classes. I even have one. You can find it right there at that link. These are a great way to learn new skills from an instructor. Most classes are set up to learn a new skill very incrementally so you can practice and really feel confident about those new things you're learning. And that goes along with the next piece of advice. Don't be afraid to try new things. So many knitters start knitting and then they just stick to really simple projects or really basic stitch patterns and they don't try to branch out and learn new things. I really understand this because when I first started knitting, I was, I thought cables were this mysterious thing. I saw all these cable patterns and I just didn't understand how they could create those things. But once I actually saw how you create a cable, I realized it's not very hard at all. Of course, there are some complicated cables, but the actual process of creating one is very, very simple. So don't be scared of trying new techniques. You might discover something that you absolutely love. And even if you mess up, it's not that big a deal. You can just rip it out and try it again. And speaking of ripping out and trying it again, lifelines are going to be a big time saver. Now a lifeline is just a, a piece of yarn or a fine thread that is woven through a particular row in your knitting. So if you make a mistake and you have to rip a section out, you can rip it back to that lifeline and put your stitches right back on your needles. That lifeline saves your knitting from unraveling completely. They are a great thing to have, especially when you're practicing a new kind of stitch pattern and you're not sure how to do it. If you put a lifeline in after you know everything looks correct and then you make a mistake, you can rip it right back out and try again without losing all of your work. Another important thing is to just relax. I know when you're a new knitter and you're learning those first things, you can just start to get really tense and tighten up. Believe me, I understand my first few washcloth knitting projects were really super tight and I was really shoving those needles in, trying to get them into those tight stitches. So take a breath, relax, and loosen up. Those needles are helping you size your stitches. You don't need to yank on that yarn and tighten it. You don't have to be tense while you learn this new skill. It's just yarn and needles. You can rip it out and try again. It's not gonna go anywhere. There's no hurry to learn all of the things yesterday. There's so much to learn with knitting. There's so many different stitch patterns and techniques that you could take really years to learn all of these different things. So just enjoy the process. Try a new cast on, pick something with an interesting stitch pattern. Just take your time and enjoy the process of knitting without having to worry that you have all of these new things to learn. You'll learn them as you go with each new project. Now the most important skill that you need to develop is learning how to read your knitting. You need to understand how to read the stitches, how to read the rows, how to understand the fabric that you're creating. This is an important skill. You don't wanna to have to take a picture to, and have somebody else tell you on social media how many rows you've knit. You've gotta to learn to, do, to decipher that for yourself. And when you understand how to read your knitting, you'll be able to fix your knitting mistakes, understand more advanced stitch patterns, learn new techniques, and understand how they apply to basic knitting skills. But it all starts with understanding the basics of reading those very simple knit and purl stitches and how they work together. And I have a free guide that will walk you through exactly how to do that. You can download it at this link. I'll put the link down below. You can go there, put your email address in, and get this free PDF that will help you understand the basics of reading your knitting and understanding what's happening on your knitting needles so you can become a more confident and Knitter. And if you're looking for more practical tips and advice about knitting, check out this short playlist I've created just for you right here, and I'll see you in the next video.